congratulations on purchasing a safety hoist EH250 electric material hoist. We are confident your new EH250 will make any job simpler, safer, and more efficient than ever before. In this video, we will demonstrate how to set up your EH250, how to get it prepared for your first run, and how to break it down when it's finished. First things first, when you receive your EH250 shipment, you should receive a box on a skid and two loose boxes. You should inspect your shipment for missing boxes or damage to any of the boxes. If you notice anything is wrong with your shipment, sign for it as damaged or incomplete and do not open the boxes. You should immediately call our customer service team who will file a claim for you. The number is 610-941-4333. After inspecting your shipment and verifying you have all the expected boxes, you can begin unpacking your shipment. Once all the boxes have been unpacked, you should have Box 1 containing Peak Flap Carriage Power Unit Lifting Handle The following additional items continued in the storage compartment. Instruction manual, assembly hardware bag, including the bumper stops, one power cord with screw connection, and a pendant with screw connection. The plywood carrier brackets can be found mounted to the inside of the carriage. Box 2 containing 4 foot track section with splice plates attached, 8 foot base track section with feet attached. Box 3, containing two 8-foot track sections with the splice plates attached. Once all pieces have been identified and inspected, you're now ready to start assembling the hoist. Take a second and pause the video here to make sure you have all the items shown. Before getting started, make sure to have these items on hand. A 9 16th wrench, a 732 inch Allen key wrench, two three-quarter wrenches, a Phillips head screwdriver, gloves, preferably rubberized, and a 12-gauge extension cord, no longer than 25 feet. Gather the four pieces of track and lay them on the ground. The eight-foot base section with feet attached should be at the end, with the two additional eight-foot track sections above it, and the four-foot section at the top. You will know the track is facing the correct way if the off-centered rungs are closer to the ground. Please note, the track will not fit together if any of the sections are upside down. Once the track has been laid out, install the bumper stops into the second rung from the bottom. These bumper stops are located in the hardware bag. A quick tip would be to install the small blue bracket before inserting it into the rung then screw in the remaining two screws. The track sections are to be installed using the pre-installed splice plates. Uninstall the outer hardware on the splice plates to get started.
The square holes on the splice plate should line up with the holes on the track. A trick to help slide the track section together would be to lean them on their side and insert them as shown. Start with the base section, which has the pre-installed feet. Line up the attached splice plates with the next track section and fasten using the 3 8 16 by 3 quarter carriage bolts. Secure the track section by hand tightening the nylon insert wing nuts. Repeat this step going from top to bottom until all track sections are secured. It is now time to assemble the carriage. Attach the flap to the carriage using a 3/8-16 by 3/4 hex bolt. Tighten using a 9/16th wrench. You may now slide the completed carriage onto the top of the track section by engaging the wheels onto the track. You will know this is done properly if the carriage slides smoothly up and down the track. Leave the carriage near the base of the section, resting on the bumper stops. It is now time to attach the peak. Slide the peak assembly onto the top of your track section and check to make sure the square holes are aligned and the yellow sticker is facing upwards. Secure both holes using the 3-8-16 by 3 quarter carriage bolts and 3-8-16 caps nut. Tighten using a 9-16th wrench. You may now move on to assembling your power unit. You should now install the lifting handle onto the power pack. Using the 3-8-16 by 1 inch alloy button head screw and 3-8-16 nylon nut. Secure the lifting handle to the power pack. Ensure that the heads of the bolt are inside or else the compartment flap will not open. Repeat until all bolts are secure. Tighten with a 9 16th wrench and a 7 32 inch Allen key wrench. Remove the power cord and pendant cord from the power unit storage compartment and attach them via the quick connect fittings. The connectors can be tightened with the metal rings near the base. Ensure that the connectors are snug. Then clip both cables into the top eyelets. These eyelets ensure that the cable cannot be pulled out of position during operation. Plug the power unit into any working power source that is capable of supplying 110 volts and 15 amps. Any household outlet or portable generator is typically capable of this. If you are using an extension cord, a 12 gauge extension cord is required, no longer than 25 feet. Turn the track assembly on the side and move the power pack within 6 feet of where you will be setting the hoist up. Using the down button on the pendant controller, unwind enough cable to go up the track, through the peak pulley, and down the other side. A quick tip would be to unspool the entire cable to remove slack and as an added measure to prevent cable crossover. Make sure that you are keeping positive tension on the cable while unwinding. This means you should be pulling the cable from the drum with the gloved hand, keeping the cable taut to prevent cable crossover.
take the remove cable and walk it to the peak pulley. Thread the cable through the pulley and down the front of the track. Remove the half inch bolt and nylon nut and sandwich the pulley cable between the bolt washer and the carriage washer. Tighten the nut back onto the bolt using two three-quarter wrenches. You may now stand your hoist. Before raising your hoist, take notice of any overhead obstructions such as power lines or trees. Using two to three people, raise the hoist and move it to the building where it will be used, ensuring that it is stabilized. Best practice will be to have someone stand on the base to keep the feet still and have the remaining people walk the hoist up into position. For added stabilization and roof edge protection, use the Safety Hoist Standoff, a patent pending safety hoist accessory. You may now attach the power pack to the third and fourth track rung from the bottom. There are distinct black rings called stop collars that will keep the power pack from shifting. Secure using the attached anchor pin and T-lock. Using the pendant controller, press the up button to remove any excess cable slack. Release the button as soon as there is no excess cable slack remaining. You are now ready to do a trial run. Press the up button on the pendant controller to lift the carriage up and press the down button to lower the carriage. As soon as the carriage hits the top or the bottom, be sure to remove your finger from the button to avoid cable crossover. Run two trial runs to get used to operating the hoist. Make sure you are inspecting your winch drum and inspecting your cable during each run. Crossovers must be corrected. Remove your finger when the flap folds over. This is how you will know it has reached the top. You may now begin to use your hoist. Lower it to the desired position and begin loading your supplies onto the carriage. This is an example of when you have cable crossover. Cable crossover occurs when the cable winds over itself unevenly. This may cause the hoist to jump or stutter. To correct this, you should lower the hoist back down and begin unspooling the cable with the gloved hand. Best practice will be to unspool the entire length of the cable, then slowly wind the cable back up to ensure that it has been wound up evenly. Please make sure you are keeping positive tension on the cable while winding it back up. Once your job is complete, you will want to disassemble your hoist and store it properly. Start by removing the power pack from the track and sitting it on the ground. You may now lower the track to the ground.
once the track is lowered, remove the cable from the carriage by unbolting it. Make sure to reattach the carriage hardware. Unstring the cable from the peak and walk it back down to the power pack. Using a gloved hand, begin winding the cable back onto the drum using the up button while watching for tangles or crossovers. Once the cable is properly wound around the drum, you may now unplug your power unit and store all cords in the storage compartment. Depending on where you choose to store your hoist, you may be able to leave your track sections intact. If you need to disassemble your sections, remove all hardware with the wing nuts attached. You can choose to leave the carriage on the track or remove it by sliding it off the track. Your hoist is now totally disassembled. Remember, you should always store your hoist indoors until the next time it is used. Never leave your power unit in the rain. Want to make your EH250 even more efficient? Visit www.safetyhoistcompany.com to check out our growing accessories line, making it possible to lift buckets, bricks, solar panels, and everything in between. Whatever you are lifting, we have an accessory for you. Thank you for watching.